there we go. Um, uh, first of all, I think you can probably see this. Um, uh, since it is lunch and learn, um, I have my Cape May peanut butter with me. Um, this is one of my favorite things that I found while on the Jersey Shore. You can buy this, uh, you can buy it online or you can um, uh, get it at the Cape May Peanut Butter Company in Cape May or in uh, at Historic Smithville, they have a shop there. It's honey roasted, but the butterscotch is the best. So a little bit about me before I start into my presentation. Um, as Caitlin mentioned, I'm a, a writer and an author. Uh, uh, my stories have been in the Asbury in the last year alone in the Asbury Park Press. I've been on TV on NBC 10 in Philadelphia, NBC4 in, in New York. I've got two stories coming up um, this spring and summer in New Jersey Monthly, the community magazines. Um, and I also um, have a longtime love affair, which I'll talk a little bit about with the Jersey Shore because uh, I lived in Philadelphia and was a vice president of communication and tourism for many years. And, but at the same time also had a small condo in Brigantine in the south part of the Jersey Shore. And then for the past um, 10 years, we've been renting and then uh, build a house here in the northern part of the Jersey Shore. So um, I feel like I can speak authoritatively about everything from, or now I can, <laughs> having gone through all this research over the past uh, couple of years, uh, everything from Cape May to um, Sandy Hook. So let's just uh, get started here. Let me call up my screen and here we go. And uh, so we're talking about spring of the shore and more with our lunch and learn. Uh, my very first trip to the Jersey Shore was a certain summer in the 1960s. I was a kid from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which is the far western part of Pennsylvania, very far away. Not a day trip at all from the shore, but something you would come for a week. And uh, my family of seven got in our Ford station wagon, um, not wearing seatbelts, of course, because who wore seatbelts back then, and uh, drove along the Pennsylvania Turnpike and then the Atlantic City Expressway. Um, and we discovered, at least for me, a new vista, which was the Atlantic Ocean. And there I am with my sisters and some friends digging in the sand at, at, the, at Stone Harbor. Um, so. And I couldn't have been happier. I was amazed. We were kids back then. We would our parents would come for the day. We'd sit on a blanket. Nobody nobody uh, checked and found you know followed us around to make sure we were okay. We just kind of hung out and built sand castles and dug canals. And I got sand all over me and I swam. I never wanted to go back to the apartment, not even for dinner, because it was just me and the sand and the ocean. And I could just imagine staying there for. Um, the rest of my life. But of course, I grew up, went to school, college, journalism school, and I've had an opportunity to travel the world. Um, I've been to the canoeing in the Indian Ocean along the coast of Myanmar. I've been four-wheeling in the empty quarter desert of the Arabian Peninsula, and I've swum in the Blue Lagoon near Rangara, a small Tahitian island out in the Pacific Ocean. But at the end of the day, even when you've traveled the world, there's nothing quite as great as sitting on my surfboard across from the seawall in Seabright and looking across at our house. I'm still nine years old and the rest of my life is in front of me. So when I thought about the idea of going to the publisher who does a number of these hundred things books, he's done, they've done more than a hundred of them now in cities and towns and states. Um, and not, they had not thought about doing one at the Jersey Shore. And I came to him and I said, I, I think this would be a great, a great place for one of your books. Um, because I've lived in the northern part of the Jersey Shore in Seabright. That's from my um, deck across the seawall. And you, if you look, you can see Manhattan in the distance. Um, and as I mentioned, we had a vacation home in Brigantine. And in the far southern part of the Jersey Shore, of course, you can look across from the Cape May Ferry to um, Delaware. And I just thought that there were some great, wonderful places. And I decided that I would just concentrate on the four counties of, the, of what I consider to be the Jersey Shore, which I think most people do, which is Monmouth, Ocean, Cape May, and Atlantic counties. 
So when you write a book like 100 Things to Do at the Jersey Shore, you, especially since I've lived here, you know, you places you think, you know, well, that's easy. I can come up with a list of 100 right off the top of my head. Of course, not really quite that easy. Um, you want to go back then and rediscover places. And then you also want to discover new places on the 139 miles of the shore. So, you know, I thought, oh, well, I know everything there is to know about um, the ocean and sand and surfing. That's actually me <laughs> with my surfboard. I'm not very good. I'm usually um, not in the water. I'm usually trying to struggle to get back uh, up on my board somewhere. I just started surfing about three years ago. But also, you know, what else do you know? You know, oh, there's, there's the oldest roadside attraction in the United States. That's got to be in the book, Lucy the Elephant. Or the famous East Coast Painted Ladies in Cape May. They're certainly got to be in the book. But, you know, what I didn't know about these places that, for example, surfing, did you know that Ron John Surf Shop, if you go to Florida, you see these huge billboards all over the place, act like they own it. But Ron John Surf Shop and Ron John actually started in Long Beach Island. And surfing on the East Coast um, can go, not only goes back to Long Beach Island, but goes back to seven presidents park in Long Branch where they had to get special permission just to take their boards out in the water. Um, but they started in the 60s and the 70s and it really took off here at the same time it was taking off um, on the West Coast. Uh, also, what you might not know is that when you climb inside Lucy the Elephant, you get an amazing view looking out six stories high across the Atlantic Ocean and to Margate into Ventnor and then west into the Atlantic County. Um, and then, and you also may know, I don't know if you know this, but in Lucy the Elephant, they just started as a kind of gimmick fundraiser thing of allowing people to sleep inside the elephant in a, in a Airbnb kind of package. Um, they did that starting last March, and I think they're re-inaugurating that um, this um, summer. And also that the painted ladies, we sort of take it for granted. Of course, there's these amazing Victorian homes, the largest collection of Victoriana on the East Coast that they've always been there. Well, they have always been there, but in the 1970s, they were going to be, most of these buildings, especially this one, the Emlyn Physic House, was going to be destroyed. Uh, Wildwood had taken off. It had been, people said, well, why do we have these old crumbling Victorian homes? Why don't we just tear them down and build a bunch of uh, motels and hotels, we're certainly going to make a lot more money that way. But a group of um, mostly women got together um, and created the Mid-Atlantic Cultural Center, and they battled to keep this wonderful mansion, the Emlyn Physic Estate, from being destroyed. And it led to the rebirth and renaissance of Victorian architecture in Cape May. Um, Cape May, which uh, you may know, is was actually America's first seaside resort. It was even in the 1700s, it was a place where people would travel when they were coming from Europe. They would stop there on their way to Philadelphia or on their way back. Um, they would stop in the Cape May in the summer for, for the air and for the, um, the wonderful ocean. Well, what about places to rediscover? So one of the things you, of course, you want to think about a lot is, is what's the industry um, and, and how are maybe things, the landmarks that are there today, reflective of um, New Jersey's three and 400 years of history? Well, lighthouses, of course, um, as you all know from Tuckerton Seaport, um, are uh, up and down the Jersey Shore, but they were there not for picturesque reasons, but for functioning reasons. This is uh, Sandy Hook which is the oldest continuous operating lighthouse in the United States. Um, there's the, and here's the Hereford Inlet Lighthouse in North Wildwood, which is still manned by the US Coast Guard today. And on um, weekends in October, there's a lighthouse challenge. And as you know, many of you know, probably because Tuckerton is part of it, where you try to, to go and climb all the lighthouses on the Jersey Shore and the Delaware Bay um, in one weekend. That happens in um, every October. But you know, these lighthouses are there because waterways and the fisheries were so important to uh, the development of, of New Jersey 
um, and of really of this country. I mean, Cape May Wildwood today is still the second largest commercial fishing port on the East Coast. Uh, it's second only to um, the Boston area in terms of just the number of fish that are brought in and sold there and eventually go out to people all over the United States. But the waterways, of course, are still used for um, recreation. This was a, a boat parade last uh, summer in the Shrewsbury River. Um, and these uh, boats are available for hire out here in Atlantic Highlands and, and of course, all up and down the, all up and down the coast in, in uh, Point Pleasant and Manasquan and uh, Ocean City. Um, you, Cape May, of course, too, you can, uh, fishermen come out every day and go out and try to catch fish just like I did with um, my um, in-laws um, two summers ago. And these were the fish that we caught these purple colored sea bass um, right out here, um, not too far from Seabright and Sandy Hook. But the, the fisheries and the waterways are also fun um, because they're a, a way for us to explore our past, whether it's the real past, as you may well do at the Tuckerton Seaport and Bayman's Museum, or as you can see on the left, it could be in the Black Pearl Pirate Tour, which is one of the two pirate tours here on the Jersey Shore. One of them's in Tom's River, and then this one, the Black Pearl, operates in the summer in, um, on Long Beach um, Island. And then, you know, in addition to rediscovering industry, we give, it gave me an opportunity to rediscover culture. And I think, I tend to think of Wildwood, or I did before, as a place sort of like a little bit too crazy for someone of my age. Um, lots of crazy things going on. But Wildwood is still, a, is really a kind of wonderful place. It's very Americana. It's, it's, I find it to be the most diverse place on the Jersey Shore today. If you walk down the boardwalk, you will hear any number of different languages. It's where people come and I think feel comfortable mingling and, and uh, whether it's um, riding the rides or the, one of the three water parks, or as you can see in this picture, um, walking your dog. There's my dog, Jack. He's actually not right. He's kind of the one closest to the big fire hydrant there. This is a dog park in Wildwood. But one of my favorite memories of writing this book was one morning I was on uh, the Wildwood boardwalk and I was uh, taking photos. And I, from, someone had told me this would happen, but at 11 o'clock, every day starting now in April through, throughout the summer, the whole boardwalk stops. There's a, there's a loudspeaker, it comes on, and that loudspeaker, uh, they play the national anthem. You can see people here just stopped. There was just thousands of people, they all stopped, put their hands over their heart. We heard the national anthem. Then, then they play Kate Smith singing, God Bless America. And then they have Bobby Rydell singing, Wildwood Day. So the culture, particularly around uh, Wildwood, is a celebration of the, the 1960s and 50s and the, in the early 70s. And if you love architecture, they've really started to embrace their what they call the doo-wop architecture, the space age or satellite architecture of the 1960s where um, you can see crazy places like the Caribbean Motel and the Riviera Motel. There are more than 80 motels. They didn't restore, they just, they always been, they've always been working and always had people uh, going to them that you can see particularly in the Wildwood Crest uh, section of the Wildwoods. I also found, especially last year, a tr you know, really challenging year for many of us that the, one of the great things about being at the Jersey Shore was rediscovering nature. Um, this is a very small attraction, the Marine Mammal Stranding Center, but it does a very big thing. It's the only entity on the whole entire Jersey Shore that rescues seals, um, gray seals, harp seals, dolphins, and sea turtles. Uh, there's no state, no city, no federal government. There's no other entity that that sort of jumps in and does what they do. So my wife and I joined um, the center uh, to 
help um, sort of actually go to the beach and tell people to stay away from the seals when, when they are there. And we had an opportunity last April to help um, them release this very unhappy large um, harp seal and Sandy Hook. He kept going towards me. I'm practically running away from him. I took this picture. In fact, took all the pictures that you see in this presentation. Um, he was coming right at me. Um, but uh, he eventually went back in the water um, and they had rescued him and continue to rescue him every day. In fact, um, we get calls uh, regularly saying, could you please go down and sit by that seal and tell people to keep away from them? They'll be fine. Um, this is a, a photo I just took of the, um, of the seals in Sandy Hook. There's one of the things we discovered was that in the spring, on a certain series of rocks out by Fort Hancock, and only at low tide, when, when the sun is out, these, these seals just congregate, literally hundreds of them will congregate out. And then as soon as the water comes up, they vanish and disappear. And then by, by about June, they're, they're sort of gone for the season. But it's, it's been a great opportunity for us to explore the nature. This, this uh, uh, thanks to Tuckerton, when I was doing my book, um, uh, I think Paul told me, he said, you know, you should just drive down Great Bay Boulevard till it ends. I said, why would I, well, what's at the end? Well, this is really incredible uh, uh, marine area. What are you talking about? I, uh, so I said, well, so of course I went to Tuckerton and Tuckerton is one of the hundred things in my book, but I also said, okay, well, I'll drive down there. And so I drove down there and I, this the came upon all these egrets. It was just amazing. And I took this picture. It's one of my favorite moments on my tour of the Jersey Shore. But even sometimes you don't have to look as far away or close as your house. We happen to live uh, here in Seabright where the Shrewsbury River is on one side and we have a small beach and the Atlantic Ocean is on the other side. And this is, uh, we found lots of wildlife right here. This is right in front of my house. We have a number of swans that come out. Um, these are deers from Sandy Hook who have decided that uh, that they would come. This is, I don't know if it's the same deer, but you can see this was over the course of summer. The, they, they come into my yard. We have some pine trees and some bushes and they seem to enjoy uh, sampling um, that. We're not always crazy about it, but you have to be careful and let them do what they want to do. And then we have goose. We, they were raising their, their little gooselings all summer long. It was really wonderful. This is again, right outside, right outside my door. Uh, what a great opportunity. And, and then back in Sandy Hook, we, this is, um, I just took this picture last week. Um, the osprey are all back and they are, um, they're nesting in the, the chimneys of uh, the buildings along Fort Hancock. And they're also right across the river from where we are in the Navsink and the Shrewsbury. And we spent a lot of time in our kayaks last summer and I would take my camera with me and we would photograph this amazing pair of bald eagles that have uh, are living um, near Hartshorn Woods. Uh, this was a great moment on the left where one of the ospreys was not very happy that the eagle was in what we call os the osprey woods section of Hartshorn and, and the, the osprey will come and really right on nearly attack these eagles. It's a great and amazing thing. This was also in our river, we had three dolphin they stayed here for about four months um, and um, they kept, they kept uh, following the fish in from the Atlantic Ocean and, uh, and uh, along the Sandy Hook Bay and into the river. And we would just go out with them and they just ignored us and fished and ate and fished and ate day after day after day. And then we also had a great opportunity. I uh, looked out or my wife looked out the window of our house and into the river of all places. And there we saw a humpback whale. And this was last, just around Memorial Day last year. And this picture and these pictures actually wound up in the Asbury Park Press. I took these pictures from the Highlands Bridge. It crosses over from Highlands to Seabright. This uh, humpback whale stayed in the Shrewsbury River just fishing again for, uh, for really a, almost a whole day. And, Fortunately and luckily went back out. Um, you know, one of the things that you'll see in my book or that you can certainly see is that um, the whale watching trips have started to really um, take on their own life here in the, on the Jersey Shore. 
Um, this is a whale watch we went out on in Belmar. There's the Jersey Shore Whale Watch. Um, this is Asbury Park. You can see how close in that humpback whale was to the beach. Um, they, they're here. They're, um, it, it speaks well to the, the fact that uh, marine life is uh, not dying, it's coming back. The, the whale are just here searching for food and uh, um, the bunker that are out there now uh, a lot. Um, you can take not only at the Jersey Shore Whale Watch uh, in, off of Belmar, but there are two whale watch trips available almost every day from now through about December uh, in Cape May. Uh, we also had an opportunity to spend an entire day out uh, it took us about four hours to get there at a site off of Point Pleasant called Triple Rex. And it's where the Hudson Canyon dips down and it meets the, it dips down to, to steps, but it's also where then it, it comes up and becomes more shallow. And there were just an amazing number of humpback whales. Uh, we must have seen 30 or 40 of humpback whales uh, in, on the day in October. It was, it was really, really incredible, an incredible, um, wonderful experience. But, you know, separate from um, all the nature and the industry, uh, well, there's a lot of history here. Uh, and, and one of the things I was able to discover for the first time was the Great Hall at Shadow Lawn at Monmouth um, University. Uh, as you may know, there seven presidents visited and stayed at um, Long Branch in the 1800s and the early 1900s. And Woodrow Wilson was one of them. Uh, he stayed here. He didn't stay here, actually. He stayed uh, at the mansion that preceded this one on the same site. That mansion, I think, was like uh, 80 rooms. This mansion's 124 rooms, and you can still tour today. It's on, on the campus of Monmouth um, University. Uh, one of the other fascinating historic sites I visited was the site um, of a major tragedy of the 20th century, the crash of the Hindenburg Zeppelin. And this is at the Navy Lakehurst Historical Society. They have taken over historic Hangar 1 and developed a museum and an opportunity for you to walk uh, where the walk around the area where the Hindenburg crashed to learn a lot about the the zeppelins and the um, the passenger system that that happened um, in the early part of the 1930s and in the 1940s. Um, this is a this hangar one actually could store two. Zeppelins at the same time. It was a double wide hangar. Um, I also was happened to discover two fascinating places that, that uh, um, celebrate wild creatures or um, sort of wild creatures. This There's the um, Howling Woods Farm. It's a rescue place for wolf dogs. These are, these are animals that are some percentage of wolves uh, some, some as much as 90% wolf and, you know, 10% dog, 50-50 uh, or 20-80. Uh, these are, the, the wolves are very, um, actually surprisingly friendly and peaceful. You can um, go through the rescue preserve, the Howling Woods Farm, and then you have an opportunity to not only pet them and feed them, as you can see in this picture, but you can get them to howl, which we did, which was a lot of fun. Um, and then nearby, unrelated, is the Second Wind Llama Adventures, where you can take a peaceful two-mile walk with Bev and her one of her seven llamas. She's very much in tune with these llamas, and she wants to make sure, even before you go, that you have sort of good energy with them. And we had an opportunity in the fall to go with them, and it's their. This is a very extremely popular. Um, tour, so you have to book up, unfortunately, months and months in advance. And then also, uh, we've had an opportunity to discover Popcorn Park Zoo, which is run by the Associated Humane Societies. Um, they bring, they take in uh, animals that are either abandoned or need to be rescued. This is on the left is Kaya, the blind tiger. Um, they 
agreed to rescue there, rescue the tiger. And so you can go to this um, popcorn park zoo. You can see lions and tigers and bears, and they also have tons of pheasants and pigs and chickens and a horse and a donkey. It's it's really kind of a, a great menagerie, and it's all doing it's all serving a great cause. So those are the things I wanted to do when I was looking at writing this book. I wanted to, to write down the places I, I thought I knew, uh, rediscover places, um, and then discover new places. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to go and uh, go through a bunch of spring events in a minute. But when, uh, we agreed, Caitlin and I thought we'd take a pause now and uh, answer any questions, just you know, four or five questions. Yes, that's, uh, this is great so far, RC. It's um, some really good information about, you know, environmental places, um, historical places, zoos, all of that. Um, we do have one question so far um, in the chat. Um, what, well, actually a couple, sorry. Um, what is the name of the tour that includes wolf dogs? It's Howling Woods Farm. Howling Woods Farm. So if you just... Google Howling Woods Farm. Um, that's that's where you go. They have regular tours. Uh, I think um, Tuesday through Sunday. They're it's super. They're super friendly. Super nice. The wolves are are great. They're so they're huge and they're big and they're a little scary, but they're very calm and very friendly. All right, great. Okay, don't bring any food in with you. I brought a <laughs> I brought a, a leather I brought a leather uh, booklet that I write in, and I swear the dog was going to. Ah. Really, he already <laughs> ate it. He That's didn't, funny. but it was kind of funny. Um, and then is the popcorn park zoo still open? Uh, Someone's yes. been trying to find out. Absolutely, absolutely. They reopened last July. Um, those pictures I took actually were late July, um, and they're open all the time. Absolutely. And you know, not only is it a zoo, but that's also where you can go and um, get a rescue. You can, um, they have rescue dogs and cats that you can adopt. And oh, okay, great. And be your forever, your forever pet. Um, and I think someone was clarifying um, that you were saying howling for the, the dog, the wolf dog tour. Um, yes, it's howling. Yes, howling. H O W L I N G. Great. Howling Woods farm and they're right near six flags they're um, okay uh so they're right off of um 195 uh kind of west of tom's river i mean west of brick on the way to trenton kind of great okay just uh a couple of others um when is the whale watch time of year and where okay jersey shore what jersey shore whale watch was which is the only place in um, the northern part of the shore is in Belmar. They just started uh, their tours. And in fact, uh, I signed up for a tour. <laughs> I'm gonna go on May 8th, I believe. But they're running about, I think they're running Wednesdays and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They're, they depend, a little bit depends on the weather. They're, the, the guy who runs in Bill McKinn is, is very, um, uh, is very good about getting back to you and say, hey, look, the weather's going to be terrible on Saturday. We're canceling the tour. How about can you come on Sunday? If you can't come on Sunday, let's go another time. And uh, every time I've gone out on that tour with him, I've seen at least one um, humpback whale. It's great. So that's in the northern part. Um, last summer, also, Sea Streak Ferry in Highlands started a whale watch tour. They have not announced that they're going to do that yet this year. And then the really established whale watching trips, both of which are in um, Cape May. They're right near the Lobster House in Cape May. It's before it's before you get into sort of the downtown area. One of them is a little confusing because one of them is Cape May Whale Watch, and the other one is Cape May Whale Watcher. I will tell you, I've been out on both of them. They're both very good. Um, they operate throughout the summer, and I will tell you. One, one hint is if you want, they have trips, it's a little confusing. One will say sunset tour, one will be a dolphin watch. You want to at least go on the three hour trip because you don't, you're not going to see whales typically right in the estuary in Cape May. You need to go out not far, just off the coast, 
but they won't do that if they only have two hours. So they'll go out and, and they'll go up and down. They'll go all the way up to, oh, even like Stone Harbor. They, and, and I've been on where we've gone to basically to Delaware looking for whales. They're, they're on the phone all the time talking to, to boat captains, trying to figure out where the whales are because you, you never know um, what's going to happen. But um, we, we've had some really wonderful experiences, particularly in Cape May. Um, I will say I, I, I have not seen a whale every time I've been out there, but they always see dolphins. And sometimes they'll see right at the inlet coming into Cape May, they'll see 20 or 30 dolphins. It's, it's really incredible. And they're very knowledgeable, very helpful, lots of fun. I highly recommend it. I think I went out five times last summer. All right, great. I know there's always something new to see when you go out on those tours. Um, yes. And then uh, maybe we might have time for just two more here and then we'll save other questions for afterward. Okay. Um, yep. We stop again. Okay. Um, where is the Hindenburg hangar? Okay, it's, it's the Navy Lakehurst Historical Society. It is, on an, it is on an active military base. It's the joint military base that is Fort, um, Fort Dix, McGuire Air Force, and, and uh, Navy Lakehurst. Uh, so you, but you have to go through, so, but what you have to do is go to the Navy Lakehurst Historical Society site and book it through them. It takes it takes um, it takes a while. I, I I would tell you that's probably the, the hardest tour because they need your social security number and your driver's license. You go through a whole thing because you're going on an active military base. Oh, wow. um, but it, but it's a really cool. It's a really interesting experience. And let me tell you that hangar. I, I can't the the picture I took. I thought was is good but it's huge i mean it's you you you've probably not been in an indoor space like that ever all right great thank you yeah it looks huge <laughs> i can't imagine uh and then one more for now um any good places to stay at the jersey shore with the conversion van um a van much smaller than an rv oh gosh i i you know what um i don't know but i'll tell you what That's let me question. Uh, that I don't, yeah, I'm. I don't really have too much information about camps or campsites. I because the problem with a conversion is you don't have hookups. I assume, right? So it's not like you're going to go to a sort of classic um, campground um, and stay. Um, I so I, I'll have to get back to that. To be honestly, I don't know. Okay, All right. Okay, no problem. Um, and if well, anyone I'm, else in the chat has any um, uh, insight on that, um, yes. feel, feel free. <laughs> um, feel free to share. We have a lot of sharing going on in the chat. Yeah, there. Great. You know, I can tell you there only are a couple of state parks on the Jersey Shore. There's Island Beach State Park. There is uh, Corson's Inlet State Park. Those are the only two state parks on the shore. And then Monmouth County has Seven Presidents Park. Um, I know that they used to allow camping at Island Beach State Park. I don't know if they allowed mm -hmm. since COVID, if that is something that they brought back. I don't think they allow it at Corson's Inlet, um, at least overnight camping. I don't believe they do. Gotcha. Okay. okay. We have some um, suggestions also in the chat. So thank oh, great. You for, okay, thank good. You for good. That. Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> Send them to me too. I'll make yeah. a note of keeping them, you know. And never know. I learned something new in every one of these chats. Trust me. I yeah, always think, yep. oh, I've I've known I've learned everything and seen everything, but I have. <laughs> yeah, there's so much to learn. So thank you, everybody. Um I'll let All right, you let's keep continue. going. And, yep. Yeah, okay. So we'll keep going and we'll stop for some more questions coming up. Okay. So now we're going to talk a little bit about spring into shore. This is a picture I took last week in it, Asbury Park uh, Boardwalk, which well, you can see was quite busy and happy to see lots of people um, wearing masks. So here's some events coming up this in the next few weeks uh, at the shore. There's the Wilderness Explorers Club, uh, Beach Plump Farm in Cape May uh, host this. It's for families mostly. If you've, uh, This is a really wonderful place to go to. It's right by the Cape May Lighthouse and it doesn't, um, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't almost know that it's there, but it's an active farm. They have a wonderful lunch and um, brunch, um, uh, breakfast. Uh, I think my wife and I ate there three times over the course of two days. We take, maybe we should just go back there because the food was so good. And they have special dinners at night as well. And they have some very expensive places to 
uh, stay that are on the grounds, but you can go on the grounds, uh, you can eat here and you can walk um, through the farm um, out into the fields. Uh, well, not out in the fields and pick anything out, but you can go by, you can walk through and it's a really wonderful place. It's just a half a mile from the Cape May Lighthouse and easy to sort of, you never know it was there unless you're looking for it. Um, also, um, Six Flags, well, I know many of you probably aren't thinking, let's go to Six Flags, they're back open. But uh, what happened last year because of COVID is they reinstituted the Six Flags Wild Safari drive-through adventure. This is now open daily. You can drive through their wildlife area in your car and the safety of your car. So it's a great, I did it last summer. I took this picture with my um, niece and her, her young son and we had a great time. We went, you could see lions, tigers and bears. They have Baboon Village, a wonderful Serengeti. They have lots of, they actually have some new uh, new babies that I just read about, a variety of them that were, they're gonna be debuting through there. Um, you do have to book it, typically have to book it in advance. So as, as many of these things you do um, wanna check before you just sort of go because uh, they'll, they'll be you know, limited to the number of people that can come. Uh, in uh, Seattle City, they're having a spring girls weekend that's coming up this weekend. The shopping and discounts and special dinners. Uh, they're trying to push people to come uh, during a typically slower part of their season. Uh, you get more information, go to the seaislechamber.com. Uh, at Epsican Lighthouse on May 1st, they're having a light and sound healing arts festival. Uh, it's music, meditation, yoga workshops. There'll be healthy, there'll be food trucks that have more healthy food alternatives. Uh, and this, you can climb the lighthouse, which I did last summer when it was about 95 degrees. Um, and Absecan Lighthouse is the tallest lighthouse on the Jersey Shore. And it's right in Atlantic City. I'm sure most of you probably know that, but in the northern part of, of Atlantic City. Uh, at in Ocean Grove, they have the Spring Fling Arts and Craft Show on May 1st. It's going to be on uh, Main Avenue, which is the main shopping district, and then Pilgrim Pathway, which goes by the wonderful Ocean Grove Auditorium, which was open um, for part of last summer. I know they are really pushing to, to allow people to go into that auditorium. If you haven't been there, it's amazing place, had a 5,000 seat wood seated auditorium. Um, and hopefully uh, you'll be able to peek in while you're there. They're gonna have music, crafts, artisans uh, and Ocean Grove, especially this time of the year before the, the crowds um, descend is a great, uh, great place to go and shop and have fun. Uh, also on May 8th, I'll be there. It's the spring crafts and collectible show at Cape May. They have high uh, quality crafts and collectibles from vendors throughout the Northeast. Uh, as um, we mentioned at the top, Caitlin mentioned at the top, they will be limiting it to 200 people at any, at any one time. And it's on the grounds of the Emlyn Physic House. It is not inside the house because the house itself wouldn't be um, large enough for that, for a big show. So that'll be fun. And this is a really terrific, uh, I, I, uh, ex exhibition. It's it's small, but um, this is one place. Uh, to be perfectly honest, is not in my book because I didn't find out about it until after I wrote the book. The John F. Pito Studio Museum in Island Heights, which is on um, Tom's River. It's on right off of Route 37 between uh, Tom's River and Seaside Heights. The, John F. Pito was a, an artist uh, who um, lived and worked in, initially in Philadelphia, went to the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts, and who uh, did a lot of still lifes and Trump Doya. Um, and um, so that's, this is his house and his studio that has been completely restored as it was. But this uh, spring, starting um, at the end of this month, is Thomas Aikens in New Jersey. Uh, a small but very interesting art exhibition. Um, Thomas Aikens was one of America's great painters. He, uh, like Pito, uh, lived in, in, in Philadelphia and he's mostly thought of as a, as a Philadelphia painter. A lot of his portraits are Philadelphians. He did many sculling 
paintings on the Schuylkill River. Um, but he spent a great deal of time in New Jersey when he was a boy. He would come out with his, his uh, father and they had a kind of a, a, a fishing shack uh, out on the Delaware Bay in, in New Jersey. And then later when he, um, when he taught at the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts, he had a group of followers and they, um, their families had places um, on, at Point Pleasant and Menisquan, and he would come with them. And one of, the, one of the things that this exhibit really celebrates is less about his art than about his photography. He, he's, he was a pioneer in looking, taking photos and then going back and looking at the photos to help him understand human anatomy, to help him understand animals. And so this is actually a photo he took called Run the Sen. And it's a little hard to see on the photo itself, but he took the photo and then he, and off to the right, he's actually drawing on top of the photo and tracing the, these men on the right. Um, and, and this is part of his technique then in learning to be um, a better painter. So it's the John F. Pito Museum. It's in, Island, it's in um, Island Heights and the exhibition runs from May 1st to June 27th. It's a small museum, but not only will we be able to see the exhibition, but you'll be able to see inside the house as well. And it's a fascinating place. And Island Heights has the second largest collection of Victorian buildings um, on the Jersey shore next to Cape May. And one of the places on the East Coast with the most um, historic homes. It's not a place that's um, well known necessarily, partially because I don't think the people in Island Heights um, encourage visitors necessarily, but the Pedo Museum does. The other thing you can do is you can join me or follow me as I walk the 139 miles of the Jersey Shore. This is my uh, post-COVID crazy um, uh, goal. I'm gonna walk from Sandy Hook to Cape May. I've already walked um, uh, from Sandy Hook. I walked Sandy Hook, the nine miles of Sandy Hook, the six miles of Seabright, the two miles of Monmouth Beach, the six miles of Long Branch. I've walked through Deal, um, Allenhurst, Lock Arbor and Asbury Park. I'm in Ocean Grove. I will, if anybody uh, on this, um, on our Lunch and Learn here wants to join me, please email me at rcstob at me.com. I'd be happy to walk any part of the beach you would like to walk. I could use the, use the company, my wife and my dog Jack have been with me, um, and I'm writing about each town. So you can, if you uh, aren't interested necessarily in walking with me, you can follow me on the citypulse.com. I'm going to be writing um, stories about each of these towns. You can see my Seabright story. I said easy to park and got a little bit of uh, blowback on social media from that, but I, about 3000 people view that. And I'll talk about each of the towns and a little bit something about them and where you can park or not and beach badges and all kind of um, fun stuff and what's new there. So my book, 100 Things to Do at the Jersey Shore Before You Die, you can buy it online, as Caitlin mentioned. Um, if you go to 100 Things Jersey Shore, Dot com, and you uh, buy the book from my site, I will autograph it. it but please make, please make a note in the comments who, to whom I should autograph it. Um, I keep up to date with special events throughout the year on that site. So 100thingsjerseyshore.com is where you can buy my book. Um, and I will mail it to you and autograph it and sign it to you. Or as Caitlin mentioned, it is available um, at Tuckerton Seaport. And when I get down there, I will be sure to stop by and sign copies of the book that you can buy there. So again, thank you to Tuckerton Seaport and Bayman's Museum for having me and I'd be happy to take questions. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and join you all. Okay. All right, thank you so much. We'll give you a virtual applause um one thing i forgot <laughs> to mention <laughs> Woo um in the reactions uh button or area you can um 
put a round of applause if you'd like for our Steve. Thank you so much. Um, really great uh, environmental, historical, cultural things that you can do at the Jersey Shore. Um, always great to see. Um, so um, are there any questions? I, I went back a little bit and I, I did find a question from somebody. So I hope I um, you know, captured the ones that were up in the chat a little bit farther. Um, okay. But please, uh, you know, uh, enter them in now if you like. Um, someone was wondering where are the bald eagles in Osprey Woods? <laughs> well, so here's the deal. You're not really ever supposed to tell people where you can find an, uh, an eagle's nest, right? I will tell you that, I can tell you that Hartshorn Woods, which is in um, Highlands, um, across uh, where the Navsink and the Shrewsbury River meets, is a, there are tons, there are lots of osprey over there, uh, especially later in the summer when the osprey have their babies and they're flying around. The, it's, it's a great opportunity. So if, if you're on a boat on the Navsink River, that, that would be, um, that's, that would be a great, that, that really would be where you should go. And I suspect, Caitlin, you know, you must have lots, lots of osprey uh, right uh, down Great Bay Boulevard, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, there's osprey nests and platforms um, on either side. And um, every once in a while you will spot a bald eagle pair out on, um, on the boulevard as well. Um, though we see bald eagles more around the wintertime, um, but you know, can't hurt to, to look for them or other. Um, yeah, well, raptors. I can tell you the ones on the nav sink, we have um, kayaked by their nest. And they've got a little eaglet there. They oh, had one cool. last year. They had a we had a baby all year long, and the baby was uh, the juvenile would be yelling and screaming the whole time. Where are my parents? <laughs> Give me more food. And the, <laughs> the eaglet's just there now. And the osprey nests that we've gone by also have um, clearly have either eggs or babies in them. So right yeah. now's the time when they're nesting. But if you wait a couple months, they'll be out flying around and having a great time. Yeah, that's always good to see them back. Yeah, it's terrific. Yeah. All right. I'm going to, I think uh, the next question I saw in order, it was, uh, what was the Pulse website? It's called uh, thecitypulse.com. Citypulse.com. Uh, Citypulse.com. It's free. You don't have to register. Uh, and that's where um, you'll see, um, we're going to, you can see my, my stories, and then we're going to collect them on a page on that site as well. I also share links to almost all the stories in relevant Facebook groups. So, I mean, I'm not going to share a story about visiting Seabright in Cape May, but as I go along the shore, I'll add them to Facebook groups as well. Gotcha. Okay. Um, next question is, um, I've heard that the coastline is 127 miles, but have heard other number of miles too. I think you mentioned 139. So how many miles is the coastline? Well, <laughs> I don't know. It depends on how you measure it, right? I mean, what I did was I got out my Google ped pedometer and I, you know, I actually just sort of took, you know, I, I, I just kind of drew a line from from Sandy Hook, from Sandy Hook to Island Beach State Park, there is almost a straight line of no breaks uh, in the water, right? In other words, there's no inlets. There, there's a small inlet in Belmar, but there's a bridge. Same in, in, um, in Point Pleasant, there's a little bit of a break, but mm. it's, it's not very far. Um, and then once you get to Island Beach State Park, you know, you, you, now you're in trouble because you, you have to take a boat. And so I counted uh, Sandy Hook to Island Beach State Park as one stretch. The second stretch is the length of Long Beach Island. And then the third stretch is from the northern part of Brigantine Island, um, where the wildlife preserve is, down to Cape May. There's a couple of small breaks mm -hmm. there in the water, but mm -hmm. not very much. So it's it's an estimation. But um, I think I think 139 is pretty accurate and and my feet are going to be able to be the judge of that this oh, summer man. this yeah. spring and summer you know i've already done 25 i think i'm 20 percent into it so that's a pretty cool uh goal and endeavor i think someone said that they're going to join you possibly uh oh great so that's great yes and please please i'm going to put i'll put my email in here tell me i can tell you roughly like hey i i think i'm going to be I, you know my goal is to get to the southern tip of island beach state park by memorial day 
And then sometime in June, I'm going to be in Island Beach State Park. And then probably later June, I'll start Brigantine and keep going south. Great. Yeah, so, just break it up a little bit by bit. Yeah, I just, you know, do these, uh, yeah. I do them in like, you know, four straight, four miles or three miles or, or two miles. And I always, and I don't know exactly what day. It depends on the weather and, sure, of and course. You know, the schedule and stuff and how warm it is. So, yeah. Excellent. Uh, other people are looking forward to getting your book. Um, yes, I, I was just in Allenhurst the uh, the other day at the beach, and it was uh, it, that's a, a really the Allenhurst is not the smallest uh, beach, but it's one of the smallest, one of like the three smallest beaches. I mean, their beachfront is about four blocks. Oh wow! It's it's and it's but Allenhurst is in my book too because Allenhurst was a community that was developed um, uh, as an integrated. Uh, vacation home. Uh, all the almost all the architecture in Allenhurst is from the late 1800s to early 1900s. It's it's a great example of consistent architecture in a very small place, just north of Asbury Park. Hmm. Important. The woman from West Allenhurst will tell you the most important thing about coming to Allenhurst is do not drive over 25 miles an hour on Ocean Avenue because <laughs> there's six blocks and the police will stop you. <laughs> it's a good tip before you go. That's right. <laughs> Um, someone is asking, will you write a book about all the towns that you visit during this coastline tour? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Great. So uh, as it, uh, I've already written about two, the two sections of Sandy Hook and Seabright, my Monmouth Beach story comes out tomorrow, seven presidents. I, like in some towns, I'll do a couple of stories like Long Branch. I'm going to do seven presidents park because that's a county park. Then the main area around Pure Village and then the Elberon section of uh, Long Branch, which is actually where the seven presidents would have more likely stayed or lived, mm, <laughs> it's where, okay. it's where Garfield's house was and some of the other Grant, those kinds of people. All right. And then someone, I think you were going to put this in the chat, your email. Someone was asking about Oh, yeah. I have it in there already. Bob, I'll oh, put okay. it in. My email is, and just feel free to, you know, email me. So, and I'm always looking, and I'm looking for people to, to uh, go with me on the tour. And the reason is, logistics because we, we've learned that you park if you have two cars you can park one car at the northernmost point and one car at the southern part so you don't have to double the walk you don't have to walk from point a to b and then walk back to it all right uh, and i somebody asked about bayside towns right yes. now i'm not covering the bayside towns yet although my book mentions places like um uh, you know, and mentions places in the Bay. I, the book is not all specific to that, but right now on my, my 139 mile, mile walk, I'm not going to typically uh, go into Tuckerton, for example, or, you, you know right. what I mean? It's, it gets a little complicated or even to Tom's River because it's, then I'd have to do Tom's River and Island Heights and all the small towns along there. And maybe that's next summer. That's another big project. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right. Uh, I think that's about it. Someone was asking about is cravings the dessert place? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. I will cravings in Allenhurst. In yeah. Allenhurst. If in Allenhurst, Allenhurst, Allenhurst has a really nice restaurant, um, Mr. C's Bistro, it's right on the beach. Oh, great. Cool. And it's really nice. And it's not, it's not too busy. It's a little busy at lunch because it's connected to the Allenhurst Beach Club. But at dinner, it's, uh, I've been there and I've never had a problem. It's a great place. Okay. Someone That's just funny. said, love Mr. C's. You there see? you go. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if you have suggestions from other places, you know, if you, you know, if you can tell me where you also can get uh, honey roasted cake made peanut butter. I'm not there trying to, to push them. I mean, I don't have any special deal with them. I do but have a special deal with my book. 100 Things Jersey Store. There you go. Take breaks, uh, you know, drinks or food yes. while you're exploring all these great places or going That's for right. the, the long walk. Um, yeah. Johnson's popcorn, I would tell you, can I tell you my, I, I'm like the worst food person, except when it comes <laughs> to bad junk food. Johnson's popcorn, Ocean City is so wonderful. Yep. The saltwater taffy in Atlantic uh, uh, on the boardwalk. Do you know that when you walk into Fralinger's or James on, they will let you sample as many saltwater taffies as you want. That's awesome. For free. Yep. How, I mean, how better and... can that be? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. We are a little over time, so okay. um, we'll uh, we'll stop there. Um, thank you so much for all of that great insight of what to do at the Jersey Shore. Um, I think people here, um, based on the chat, have a lot of things that they have on their to-do list or new activities. Um, check out your book. You know, a lot of really exciting 
things to look forward to. Um, and I know I do too. So um, thank you so much, RC, again. And um, again, this will be on our YouTube channel. Feel free to share it with friends or family or rewatch it. If you're like, where's that place we were talking about? You know, you can always revert back to the recording. We'll have it up on our YouTube. Um, so thank you again, everybody. And um, have a great rest of your day. Thanks Take for care. having me. No problem. Yep. Bye, <laughs> Bye everybody.